Hello, my name is Dr. Rory Murphy. And I'd like to guide you through the preoperative, operative, and postoperative stages of an anterior cervical arthroplasty. First of all, I'm sorry that you're having challenges and symptoms for your neck. The good news is for pain down the arm and pain in the neck, we have very good solutions that are safe and effective. Generally, when somebody has a soft disc pinching a nerve, causing pain down the arm, and depending on their anatomy and their overall health status, we can go in, take out the damaged disc, and take the pressure off the nerve. After that, we have a gap where the disc used to be. And in some people, a disc replacement or a cervical arthroplasty can be a very good solution. This involves putting in a moving implant that mimics the natural movement of the spine. It's a motion preservation surgery. Generally, surgery for a single level or a two level anterior cervical disectomy infusion in, for my patients involves going in the left hand side of the neck and making a two inch incision. We then carefully find a pathway to the front of the spine. Surprisingly, there's very little between us and the skin and the front of the spine. This means that post-operative pain is quite low with this procedure. And most people can go home the same day from a single or a two level disc replacement. Surgery for a one or a two level disc replacement generally takes 45 minutes to an hour and a half with half an hour of setup time, getting, getting you to sleep, getting lines in, getting you positioned, carefully doing x-rays and positioning you. The operation, 45 minutes to an hour. And then there's approximately half an hour to an hour of wake up time and getting you out of the operating room safely. After two or three hours of recovery, most people can go home. Some people may stay overnight if they have prolonged post-operative nausea vomiting or urinary retention, which is rare. We have a number of techniques to reduce all these. After surgery, most people will use a non steroidal and Tylenol to control their pain. Very rarely, someone may need one or two low-dose opiates to help them the first 12 to 24 hours after surgery. I encourage gentle movement after surgery. You cannot damage your surgery with gentle movement. You can do your normal activities of daily living. You can dress yourself. You can get in and out of bed normally. We do not use a collar after cervical disectomy and arthroplasty as after surgery, we're trying to encourage movement. Gentle exercise is fine after surgery. Gentle walk walking and even gentle jogging. Most people can return to driving somewhere between three to 10 days after surgery. Listen to your body. Postoperatively, I place stereo strips on the skin as well as a dressing. This dressing is waterproof. You may shower afterwards. And after three to four days, take it off. The stereo strips will start to fall off after five to seven days. If they're not coming off after 10 days, please use some damp sponge to moisten them and peel them off or some alcohol. The first post-operative appointment is six weeks post-op. At that appointment, we'll get x-rays of your neck with you flexing your neck forward and bending your neck backwards. This is to assess the movement of the implant and make sure everything is healing well. After the six week appointment, we will generally start physical therapy to help you build up again your arms and legs. We do a follow-up at six months and one year. And in, in many cases, we'll follow people over time to see how they do it. What are the risks of surgery? Common risks include hoarseness, soreness of the throat, and swallow difficulties that could be more than five to seven days. Infection and wound complications are very rare. 
Serious complications are rare as well, but they include damage to a current laryngeal nerve, which can cause hoarseness and difficulty with the voice. This is very important for people who may use their voice for their occupation, including singers, trial lawyers, and people who do presenting. Other risks include damage to the esophagus, which can be a serious complication, leading to severe infections, swallowing difficulties, and may necessitate putting in a feeding tube permanently. Damage to the nerves, spinal cord, spinal fluid leak, stroke, coma, and even possible death are also rare, extremely rare complications that may occur. Thankfully, overall risks are very low with a cervical arthroplasty. Some specific risks to the cervical arthroplasty include the implant moving incorrectly somewhere between the 6 and 12 months or loosening over time. And they found that in the Norwegian and Swedish population during their prospective trials, that could happen in the one to three year range. Other risks with a cervical disc replacement include heterotopic bone formation. What does that mean? Well, sometimes bone can build up inside in the implant, stopping it from moving correctly. And this can then lead to a fusion through the implant. We do a number of techniques to reduce the risk of this during surgery, but it, it cannot be completely eliminated. Thank you.